x squared plus 2x minus 3. And then I give you a divisor function, which is x minus 2. So pretty much what they're saying is x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by x minus 2. Now again, this is our factor, right? This is what we're going to divide into the polynomial. So the first thing we're going to apply in our synthetic division is we take our factor and we set it equal to 0. All right? Then we solve. x equals 2. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So now you take 2, write it down, and then you take now your um, exponent. So you have 1, 2, negative 3. First number you bring down, right? Just take the coefficients. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 3 plus 8 is going to be a positive 5. So that's now your remainder constant in your linear term. But I'm not asking for this problem. All I'm asking is now prove this remainder theorem. You guys can see that the remainder is 5, right? The remainder is 5. Well, by the remainder theorem, they say 5 is equal to k of f. Well, what does k represent again? What does my k represent? What is what do we call this right here? What is x minus two? It is the divisor, but as far as the polynomial, it is a what? A number that divides into another. We call it a factor, right? So we're going to say this is our factor. If this evenly divides, it's a factor. But that factor, then this is our zero. So if I have x minus k. That's it in factor form. x equals k is it in 0. So now what I need to do is I need to figure out my k is 2. So what I need to do is determine 5 equals f of 2 then. So what do I do with this 2 into my function? I do what? What do I do when you put a 2 inside that parentheses of a function? Where do I put the 2? In the x. In the x, right? I probably shouldn't give you an extra 2. But yeah, you put the x in for the, uh, you put the 2 in for, the, uh, for your input value. So therefore, let's determine what f of 2 is. Two squared is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 3. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, what you can now see is if I evaluate for my 0, if I plug my 0 into the function, I'm going to get the exact same remainder if I apply synthetic division. That's, right. That's one way to find it, yes. And, and there's pros and cons. A lot of times I'll say, hey, confirm that this is a 0. So, you know, by two different methods. So then rather than by putting your hand on your head and thinking about it, what you could do is say, well, you can prove that it's a 0 by getting a remain, or I'm sorry, you can prove that it's a 0 by getting a remainder of 0 and by plugging it in and by also by using synthetic division. However, the pros and cons are, here, you just, you're just telling, this is just telling you what the remainder is. Here, you're actually getting the answer and you're going to be able to find the remaining zeros, which we'll talk about here in a second. Okay? That's the remainder theorem. That is a problem on a test that you are going to have to know. So, want to get a drink of water? You can drink water.